and maybe many of y'all might not realize that I myself am actually a student. Uh, I don't talk about it a whole lot, but I'm actually in school to get my master's degree. And uh, this school year, I took a particular class called Old Testament Survey. And in this particular class, uh, it's split up into two parts. So there's Old Testament Survey 1 in the fall and Old Testament Survey 2 in the spring. In Old Testament Survey 1, part of the course requirements was to write a 15-page research paper. And this paper almost killed me with all the research I had to do for it, the bibliography, the index, the title page, the footnotes, the in-text citations. It was a lot, a lot of work. And when the spring semester rolled around, I figured that Old Testament Survey 2 was going to be very similar to Old Testament Survey 1. And I noticed in the syllabus that it did not describe a research paper, but in the course outlines week by week, it was, there were several descriptions of, at this point, you need to be working on your paper. At this point, you need to know about what you want to write about. At this point, you need to be prepared for it. It needs to be a practical paper, something that you want to teach about, that you want to share with others that they can learn about. So I began the task of preparing this 15-page research paper. I put weeks and weeks of effort into it, countless hours. There were some days I even took vacation days out of my personal allotment of vacation days for the year to do research and writing for this paper. Um, towards the end of the semester, I emailed my teacher, and I emailed him and asked him a question about particular parameters for this paper. Well, he didn't respond that day or the next day, so, or the next day after that, so I just, you know what, I'm just going to gun it and go for it, and instead of just, is it this or this, I'm just going to do my best to mold the two together. And so finally, I finished this paper, written over 16 pages, um, title page, index, in-text in in citations, footnotes, bibliography, the whole 10 yards. I'm in the process of finally, like, putting these final revisions on this paper, um, correcting any typos or spelling mistakes, I want to make sure this paper is the best that I can possibly give it. And as I'm finishing up these final corrections, about to send this paper, I get a ding from my email from my teacher that says, Tyler, there is no research paper required for this class. All that work and that time and that effort I put into it, I could say it was for nothing. I didn't get mad. I didn't get upset. All I could do was laugh. I remember I called Brother Kelly and I said, you want to hear something funny? Because he knows he's seen me working on it for countless hours, all the time I put into it, the stress I put into it, the questions I've had about it. And he's like, what? And I was like, that paper? There was never a paper required. I have never heard Brother Kelly have a longer pause of silence <laughs> than in that moment. The moral of the story Things in life don't always turn out the way we expect them to. There will be ups, there will be downs. There will be easy days, and there will be hard days. There will be valleys, and there will be mountaintops. But life is a journey. To Taylor and to Hunter, I say this. Congratulations. We are very proud of you. You've graduated high school. Congratulations on passing the easiest part of life because it only gets more challenging from here. And to Miss Jill, I say, you go, girl. You got that degree. Good job. For our graduates today, I give you a challenge to live life with your best efforts. Don't just settle for something. Don't settle for contentment clocking in somewhere that you hate or you feel stuck in, find what you love to do and do it well. And if that means for the time being you might need to work at somewhere that's less ideal than other places, don't treat it poorly. Treat it correctly, work hard, give it your best effort, respect those in authority over you, even if you might not always feel respected by them. And remember that ultimately it is not man you are working to serve or to impress, you are working to serve and glorify Christ. And your example could be one that points others in their own relationship with him. For our graduates, not only, but also for all in attendance today, I give you this challenge and this aim. That whatever the next stage of life is, it does not mean that these scriptures, the principles, are only for the graduates. It's for all of us. Especially for those who have lived a little more life than these students have lived. God's word is not just applicable to certain peoples, but is applicable to all peoples. Whether you're a high school senior or a senior citizen in life, 
God's word is never failing, nor is it ever changing. It is the power and majesty of being a divine revelation from God himself. So if you hear this and you're thinking, oh, this is for just the students. No, this is for all of us today because God's word is for all peoples at all times, for all seasons, for all life. I encourage us to have our minds focused on the light of Christ because apart from Christ, God's word for our lives couldn't be fully manifest. Only through Christ, and I want you guys to remember this, only through Christ can we live our lives to the fullest of glory and reflect them to a world around us that desperately needs to know him. The book of Ecclesiastes was written by an unnamed author. Through several things in the text point to Solomon as the most likely author, the author refers to himself only as the preacher. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 1, where we'll find ourselves beginning, a, it's, a, it's the story of a man, and he's looking back on a life lived, and a life lived of hard lessons learned. So if you will turn your book to the book of Ecclesiastes, I has, should have the scripture on the screen, um, starting in verse 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 4 through 7. A generation goes, and a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. The sun rises, and the sun goes down, and hastens to the place where it rises. The wind blows to the south, it goes around to the north. Around and round goes the wind, and on its circuit the wind returns. All streams run to the sea. But the sea is not full. To the place where the streams flow, there they flow again. Today, we're ce- today we are celebrating the graduates of May, spring, 2022. But tomorrow is a new day for all of us. For all of us, we go on to the next adventure that that day brings to us. Last year, last year at this time, we celebrated several other students who graduated. Next year, We'll celebrate several more students who will graduate, and I'm looking at a few of them right now. Life continues on and on. This morning the sun rose, and tonight it will set. You guys have finished this part of your lives for now. Now the journey begins as to what is next to come. As you depart school, whether it's school or college or high school, as you depart school, the next generation will come behind you. And then one day another generation will come forward after that. Another generation after that. Life is a constant cycle chasing after goals and dreams. And I'm sure each of you had the same goal in mind. I said, I can't wait to finish school. I can't wait to graduate. I can't wait to go on to what is next. Always looking at the next big thing, but not really taking the time to enjoy each day and each season as it comes. That's what the writer says. He says, a generation comes, a generation goes. The earth remains forever. We are here in this time. Fifty years ago, our grandparents were graduating high school or college. Fifty years from now, our grandchildren will be graduating. It is a constant cycle of life. We are here today. We are here in this journey, in this moment. Tomorrow we'll be in a new adventure, and tomorrow after that we'll be after a new time. Life continues on. You see, the preacher wanted his audience to learn something that while they were young, that he didn't learn until he was He wanted something for his audience to learn while they're young that he himself didn't get to learn until he was much older in life. No matter what you do, no matter how small or how grand, the sun will rise in the morning and the sun will set in the evening. This man, this preacher, he chased after everything that the world had to offer. He had everything a person could want. He had more money, more property, more concubines, more servants, more property, more palaces, more gardens than anyone who possibly has ever lived in his lifetime or lived before him. Probably even more, even lived more, had more than anyone who's lived after his lifetime as well. But still, no matter what he had, no matter what wealth or treasures he had, nothing satisfied what he was seeking for. He kept going for the next big thing, and when the satisfaction left him for that, he went on to the next thing, and the next thing, and the next thing. Chapter 2, starting in verse 4, says, I made great works. I built houses. I planted vineyards for myself. I made myself gardens and parks and planted them all kinds of fruit trees. I made myself pools from which to water the forest of growing trees. I bought male and female slaves and had slaves who were born in my house. I also had great possessions of herds and flocks, more than anyone who had had before me in Jerusalem. I gathered water from my, I'm sorry, I gathered for myself silver and gold and treasures of kings and of provinces. 
I've got singers, both men and women, uh, many concubines, the delight of the sons of man. I became great and surpassed all who were before me in Jerusalem. Also, my wisdom remained with me. And whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep them from. I kept my heart from no pleasure, for my heart found pleasure in all my toil. And this was my reward for all my toil. Then I considered that all that my hands had done and the toil had begun expending in it, and behold, it was all vanity and striving after wind, and there was nothing to be gained under the sun. He looks back on life, and he looks back on everything he's done, everything he's accumulated, everything he's built up, all of his accomplishments, all the great feats, the wealth he had amassed, the treasures, the riches, everything anyone could want out of this world. And he realizes that nothing he has will last forever. Everything he has in this world will not even be able to take with him. Everything in this world is temporary. One day, he will be gone. Everything he worked for will be given away to somebody else that didn't work for it. He chased after everything that was temporary in this world, but he never connected his life with eternity. Pastor Tony Evans said one of my favorite quotes and my favorite illustrations, and he says, So many people today are living empty lives. There was a man who once said he was dying to finish high school so he could go to college. Then he was dying to finish college so he could start his career. Then he was dying to get married and to start a family. Then he was dying for the kids to turn 18 so they could leave the house. I'm sure none of y'all felt that way. Then he was dying to retire. And then he was just dying. He never really got around to living because he never connected his temporal state with his earthly state. He never connected time with eternity. Time is a valuable and precious thing that many of us don't use wisely. I speak from plenty of experience. I believe the most common thing that we can look back on life and wish that we just had a little more of was time. If I could just go back and had more time, if I could just use my time better, if I could just have a little more time back at that state championship during the fourth quarter, if I could go back and have one more day with my parents or my grandparents, if I could go back to that time of my life when things were much easier, just for one day. The list goes on. I know I get so stuck looking back in time, and I'm like, man, if I could just have one more day to go back to like 1999 and be a kid at my parents' house again, swimming in the pools all summer long and not having a care in the world. Life is filled with time, and yet it seems like it's never enough. The preacher says in chapter 3, one of the most, my bad, y'all, one of the most famous passages that gets read at graduation season in time, so we're going to read it again. My thing's cursed. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up from what is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time for love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. There is a time for everything. But that doesn't mean that you need to spend all of your time rushing through time to get from one thing to the next. Two years ago, in 2020, the world shut down. And though there were many hardships, many struggles, many that were lost, two years ago, the world slowed down and we all got to breathe for a little bit. We weren't rushing around from one thing to the next. We weren't overloading our schedules and and just bouncing back and forth to as far to the point that before we knew it, like everything was going a million miles an hour. 
kids were at home. The family sat around the dinner table together. We got to make memories. We weren't always on the go rushing back and forth. Life slowed down and we got to enjoy each day just a little more. There were own difficulties. And though there were plenty of them, there was also plenty of beauty in there as well. It was a time unlike the world had ever seen before. And there was a time for everything, and everything will have its time. Graduates, brothers and sisters here today, whatever you choose to do with your time, whether it's time to go to college, to continue education, time to start your career, or time just to take a break to figure out what's next, I urge you to listen to these words. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of man to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in his toil, because this is God's gift to man. The writer says there is absolutely nothing before you. There's nothing before you than to be joyful, to do good, and take pleasure in whatever you do. If you can enjoy what you're doing, if you can take joy in your work, take joy in your schooling, take joy even in the difficult seasons and days in life, whatever it is, remember this world is temporary. This is not your home. Wherever you go, whatever you do, enjoy each day and each blessing that the Lord has given to you because it is a gift. Keep your eyes on Jesus. One day you will look back on life. You can either remember your life fondly for what the Lord did in your life, or you can look back and just think about the struggles and the hardships that have taken along as the years passed. You have ahead of you a lifetime of choices, paths, roads, directions, adventures, opportunities. Some may be hard, some may be easy. Some may be great rewards, and some may be filled with hard lessons learned. Make the most of each and every single opportunity. Each beautiful day that the Lord gives you, each day is an opportunity to do work that he has given to us as brothers and sisters in Christ. Each of your paths as individuals will be different, but as believers in Christ, we are all together called to one great task, one great calling, one great commission. Before Jesus left his disciples, he left them with a challenge, a calling, an opportunity if, 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 if Jesus' if Jesus's death on the cross did anything in addition to allowing us who know him to be redeemed from our sins, to be forgiven, to look forward to an eternity with him, it also buys us time. He promises that one day he will return. And before he returns, from the time he left us to the time he returns, he has given us a great commission to pursue with the time he has bought for us on the cross. Matthew 28, 16 through 20 says, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I realize that when we graduate high school or we graduate college, or maybe we hit a stride in our 30s or our 40s and we're trying to figure out what we're supposed to be doing next or wanting to figure out what the next great adventure and opportunity is, whatever path and whatever direction your life takes you on, each one, has a, each one of us has a different journey. Each one has a different road that we travel. However, no matter which travel we go down, no matter which road we go on, or travel or journey we take, there is always one common factor for brothers and sisters in Christ, and that is to bring the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. So wherever you go, whether you go to college, you go to career, you go to be a teacher, you go to be 
whatever, whatever your heart desires, whatever you do, find joy in it. Know that it's a blessing from the Lord. Treat it as a blessing. And in all ways, seek to make Jesus known to the world. If I could give any hint of a, a, any charge or any encouragement or any direction or any, 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 any insight as to what we're pur- our purpose is, the Westminster Catechism says that the chief purpose of man is to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. Bring glory to God and enjoy Him. That means that whatever God has given to us, whatever opportunities He presents to us, whatever things He's blessed us with or challenges He's given to us to see us through so that He can be glorified through it, Enjoy it and glorify God. Make the name of Jesus Christ known. Brother Kelly says it all the time. (coughs) Excuse me. He says it all the time. Not only do we want to hear good news, we want to be good news and we want to send good news. The good news that the world needs to hear is that we have hope. And our hope is found in Jesus. And there will be a time when Jesus returns. We don't know when that time will be. But with the time that we have, enjoy what God has done and bring glory to Christ. And that is the charge and the calling I encourage you all and remind you of all today. As Elise comes up here, maybe there's someone here who doesn't know Jesus. Maybe you've never really thought about how this world is temporary and there's eternity that lasts forever. Maybe there's someone here who who loves Jesus and knows Jesus, but you're just trying to figure out what to do next. I don't know what each and every one of you has going on in their lives. Brother Kelly doesn't know what each and every one of you has going on in your lives. We're still trying to figure out life sometimes too. But I do know that our God is a really, really amazing and wonderful God who loves us. And he wants to spend a whole lot of time with us in eternity. And that should be something that we're really excited about. But there's a lot of people out there who don't know about that excitement. And they don't know that Jesus is waiting to give them an opportunity to spend eternity with them. And maybe, just maybe, while you're going down those roads and those travels and journeys in life, God is going to use you to be that, that voice, that detour sign that takes them off the path they were heading and get a one-way ticket into his kingdom. It only comes through Jesus. Would you join me in prayer? Father God, Lord, though the words of the preacher of Ecclesiastes The wisdom that came to him came to him as a revelation after a life lived of chasing after temporary stuff. At his late age in life, he learned these lessons. This room is filled with people of young age, older age, but these lessons are lessons we all need to know. That no matter what happens in this life, each and every single day is a blessing. It's a gift from you. Lord, I pray that we would use the time that you have given to us to glorify you, to bring honor to you, and to bring hope to the world. I pray for those who have graduated this year. I pray for those who graduated last year. And for those a year from now who will graduate. As they begin their lives and their journeys in life, let their eyes be focused on Jesus. Let everyone hear have their eyes focused on Jesus, the one who will never fail, never abandon, never leave, who promises to be with us even to the end of the age. For it is in his name that we pray.